All right, we'll now call the council meeting to order for May 9th. Please rise at the invitation and pledge of allegiance. Questions about this person? Perhaps our staff can answer them. Second. Second. We have a motion and second for the further questions. Okay. We have a motion and second. No questions, and we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McChair? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Menard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number five. We have minutes from April 25th, 2022, from our regular council meeting. Do we have a motion? I got a comment. You have a comment. What is your comment? Um, in the minutes, it states that on the museum for the Tom of Flesh Gordon, that can you give us a page, please. I'm sorry. A page. Where Where are you looking at? Um, give me a minute. Um. We don't know. Let's just go ahead. I don't know. I don't know. Page six and seven. Okay. So, in the minutes, it states that uh, it was something very just one per, uh, word that was um, professional. When I asked a question in the meeting, what would this museum, who would this museum feature, and um, Mr. Seventy said that. Uh, it would not just be about professionals, it would be about the history of Avon Park, which includes the middle and the high school. But in the minutes, it said professionals. I asked about Thomas, I asked about... Uh, I mean, it's for Thomas Gordon, so obviously 99% of the effort will be put towards Thomas Gordon. I get that part. The part I don't get is the way the minute reads as if who would be featured in the museum and who would be featured in the museum is not just professional ball players. At least that's not what he said. And before the meeting, I spoke to Thomas and he pretty much said that it wouldn't just be about professional as well. So I just wanted to clarify that. Duly noted, is there a motion? I'm making a motion to approve minutes as under item number uh, C5. Okay. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any further questions? I just have one question for explanation to be honest with you. I'm not really uh, aware of it, but the, the last meeting we brought up about uh, enterprise zones and then for the minutes, can you possibly explain to us what exactly enterprise zones are fair? Yeah, so obviously, you know, I guess Jeff probably would actually be better suited for this, but the enterprise zones typically are an area of focus uh, for enterprise. So there was an enterprise zone that was not done by the city, but it was done uh, by the county and I believe actually the state as well or some other 
board, but the uh, area towards Newcorp, uh, that's to the, to the side of Avon Park from Newcorp, that entire area through there where they built those new um, high tension power lines there, uh -huh. that was deemed a enterprise zone. That's gonna basically be earmarked for you know future development. I had questions about the enterprise zone as far as uh, you know, typically there would not just be an area of focus because an area of focus doesn't really mean a, a whole heck of a lot. You know, you could say we want something to eventually be built here. So what, right? What incentives were there? Was there some type of a tax incentive? Was there some type of was it tied to a grant? You know, what sort of incentives? So those are the questions that I had for that, and I assume this would be brought up at a later meeting. Was okay. my hope. Good enough. That was it. I just wanted to bring back for Thank you. I think uh, we also have to try to find exactly what Mr. Macklin was speaking about, um, see what exactly was passed by the city and start there and hopefully be able to put it all together. All right, good, thank you. Anything else? Seeing none, we'll make a motion. Or excuse me, we already have a motion and a second. Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McGarrett? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. All right, up next item number six, we have the second reading to be a public hearing for ordinance number 06 at 2022. I'll go ahead and read it. What is this coming up? An ordinance amending the future land use map of the city of Avon Park, Florida, amending four parcels of land comprising of plus or minus 34.90 acres on property generally located to the east of a Miracle Avenue on the north side of East Winthrop Street in Avon Park. From the future land use of county medium density residential RM to city low density residential LDR, transmitting said amendment to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity for Notification, provided for some billion, provided for effective date. Okay. Jeff? Good evening, Council. We've got a brief presentation if you'd like us to go over that. Uh, sure. It's a bridge version of what we went through last time. Uh, we'll pull that up on the screen. Perfect. Okay, great. So um, uh, this item is actually two items. Uh, the one just read in the record is the future land use portion, but this is a uh, future land use and zoning request by uh, Noble Land Development. It's a small scale future land use map amendment, 34.9 acres and a rezoning of 73.73 acres. Uh, the portion of the property uh, that will address the, the land use of the four parcels you see to the, uh, to the right side of the screen, the, the east side of the, the larger property. Uh, that's located on the intersection of A Miracle Avenue and Winthrop Street generally. Uh, the purpose is to establish land use and zoning to support a new 250 uh, unit single family residential subdivision. Next slide. Uh, as I mentioned, the four parcels on the east side of the, the property uh, currently have a county uh, future land use residential medium, supports up to eight dwelling units per acre. Next slide. And the proposed uh, future land use for that portion uh, would be a city low density residential, which permits up to six dwelling units per acre, which is consistent with this area of the city. Next slide. The existing zoning uh, on the property, it's a mix of R1 uh, residential district, uh, county R1, and uh, city R1A low density residential, two parcels that were uh, already in the city. Next slide. And the proposal is to um, assign a zoning of planned unit development across all six parcels. Um, again, as I mentioned before, uh, the development proposal would be to establish 250 single family residential units. Next slide. In terms of consistency with the city's comprehensive plan and um, uh, impacts on public facilities, the request is consistent with uh, the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, supports uh, opportunities for new housing in the city, timed with development uh, infrastructure, uh, it also supports the city's objectives for providing innovative development techniques to the city's PUD process. Um, and then following the city's review, uh, there are no currently uh, adverse impacts anticipated um, at this time based on the review just from the land use and zoning standpoint. Next slide. Um, again, as part of the PUD request, um, applicants submitted a master development plan, uh, which is required as part of the PUD. Following city's, uh, city staff review, um, the plan does meet all of the requirements of the uh, PUD criteria of the city's code. Next slide. Uh, finally, as part of the PUD process, again, a number of development conditions have been drafted for the city's consideration. Um, I can go through any of those if you all have any questions, um, or if the public has any questions on that. Um, but with that, we'll stand to answer any questions you all have tonight. Thank you. 
Yeah. Any questions for Jeff at this point? I just wanted to uh, reiterate what you said last meeting that want, this is proved that each individual thing will still come back to the council, correct? Yeah, so the next phase of this, if this gets approved tonight, it'll go to a subdivision planning phase. Um, and so that will come through the planning and zoning board, and then it'll come to city council. Uh, it'll come uh, two different parts. Okay. Uh, it'll be a preliminary plat, uh, which will start to review then all of the, the detailed things, a lot of the things that we kind of mentioned at the last meeting. We'll go through a construction phase, depending on how this moves, and then it'll also come back for a final plat uh, once it gets to that step. So there will still be several meetings that this will come before the city planning zoning board and the city council. Okay, great. At, what point, at what point do we need to do the um, utility service agreement? We'll we'll start looking at that preliminary plat when they uh, when they apply for their preliminary plat portion of the plan. Yeah, we'll want to make sure that we get that established at that point before they start to submit their construction plans. Yeah. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Any other questions for Jeff? Seeing none, like I said, this will be a public hearing. So public hearing for ordinance 06-2022 is now open. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this can now do so. Seeing no takers, public hearing for ordinance 06-2022 is now closed. Does the council have any further questions for Jeff or the developer? Okay. Over. Seeing none. You want to go ahead and vote on that ordinance there, Jeff? Yeah, let's right. Yeah. So the so the first one is the one that's been read into the uh, record. That's the ordinance for six two zero two two to thirty four point nine acres from uh, the county medium density residential to city limits. Perfect. Do we have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Uh, Ordinance number 06 2022. Do we have a second? I second it. We have a motion and a second. No further questions. We'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. The motion passed. And reading the uh, next ordinance in the record, so 7 22. An ordinance of the city of Avon Park amending the official zoning map of the city of Avon Park Board, specifically amending six parcels of land comprising plus and minus 73.73 .73 acres on property generally located at the northeast corner of the intersection of Miracle Avenue, of A Miracle Avenue, and East Winthrop Street in Avon Park from the zoning of County R1 Residential District and City R 1AA. Low density residential to city PUD plan unit development provide facility provide for effective data. Okay, Jeff. Um, as the city attorney read into the records, this would be the change of the total 73.73 acres from the county R1 designation and then the city uh, uh, R1AA to the total of six parcels of plan unit development. Okay, any questions for Jeff at this point? No. Seeing none, I have a public hearing for ordinance 07 2022 is now open. Anyone wish to speak and I'll do so. Seeing no questions, public hearing for ordinance 07 2022 is now closed. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve uh, ordinance number 07 2022, please. Do we have a second? I didn't say it would change. There was no change in Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there questions or concerns? No. Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. All right, moving on to item number seven, so the State Highway Lighting Maintenance and Compensation Agreements. This is the annual uh, agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation. Last year, council approved the resolution for seven years. Goes up 3% a year based on the amount of lights, which is 255, which is the same number as last year. This money for the new council members is put into our budget for us to maintain the lights. Could be replacing light bulbs. We're here recently. We actually had somebody run into one of the poles hit and run, knock it down, and we replace that, and another one is down, so that's the money's for. 
Okay, I'm just trying to scroll down. Get there. That was a lot of pages in the pets packet there. This year's total would be eighty-one thousand one hundred eighty-four and thirty-five cents. All right. Do we have a motion? Just be a motion to approve. When once I make a motion, we approve uh, by the number D seven state highway like the next project. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and second. Is there any further questions? Thing no one called roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McKeer? Yes. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item uh, number eight, code enforcement issue, either three North Delaney Avenue. And for uh, got title search to obtain who has title to continue that one proceed forward. Uh, I just need to the vote is to proceed forward on this action. We haven't decided yet whether we're going to proceed forward with the junction or we talked about uh, this uh, with uh, code enforcement supervisor and uh, other that. So our, our feeling that maybe the best thing to do would be to do a foreclosure on this one um, because to do a foreclosure then that person would be totally out and gone as opposed to if the court no matter what the court does if they get enforcement then it might be back in here somewhere here you know start all over again this sort of thing so that's uh, what we're looking at as well and uh, we'll do one or the other if you want to put your pleasure in just to be clear, this is in reference to the property that we spoke about at our last meeting. That's right. Um, so I, I don't know if the range is not here, but for um range is right there. Oh, there it is. He he in. Okay. So it, how how's he doing with cleaning up? I'm sure he's doing well, he has made a little bit of an effort. There should be uh three pictures that were provided that you'll be able to see that's gonna be that's the area that would be the south side of uh, the residence. Um, not a whole lot of change there. Next photo is the middle of the residence. There is change there. Um, the white car they were working on in the past is gone, uh, as well as a lot of the equipment and parts that were taken out of it. That's the north side of the residence. Um, I'm not sure what that vehicle is there, but that has recently been added to the surroundings of this uh, presence. That white car you see in the back has not been really quite some time. There has been a little bit of cleaning up, but uh, certainly not. No, you know that. But the hundred dollar fine is still going. The clock is still ticking. So, so we basically have the, you know, there'll be another opportunity when we get ready to file, I'm sure, you know, to ask you whether you want to proceed. And maybe he'll have it done by then. I, I doubt it, but if so, then you know, that's your decision to make. Uh, if that's not the thought, obviously. So, how long are we going to keep prolonging everything? Because this has been this way for years. Well, that's the, that's the two options on the table is an injunction or a. Uh, uh, that's assuming that we can't foreclose. I was just asking Randy what the current lien As of the last meeting, it was uh, 57, close to 58,000. And that's about the $100, another 1400 on top of that since the last meeting. So we're, we're approaching 60 grand. So Jerry, how does it actually work with the uh, foreclosure? Does it go by, you know, similar to a, a bank would a, a foreclose and they you know, sell it at auction and they keep what is over top of what is owed or how, how does it work there? Yes, I mean, the only difference is that um, we don't have quite as much right uh, as banks do. I don't have, um, but their lien rights are more substantial than it's the state gives to enforcement. And that's the staff we were trying to work out right now. I really not discuss the details of that, but but that's what we want to do. If it turns out that that works for us, then I certainly my my favorite uh, is the process as well because the total one is the, the, the violator from the property, and that really is the best outcome for the city and for the neighbors. 
as opposed to having the judge threaten and then come back in and threaten again and then come back in and threaten again and then eventually you know he might be in jail for not complying but then it's out and, and then there's a uh, you know even if he complies that's nothing to stop him from doing another month or two and starting all over again so it doesn't um, matter that the house is not in his home he can still be that's that's something that we're working So it sounds to me like uh, with these foreclosures, it's each one is kind of a, a very different case. They are pretty much. We should still claim that all foreclosures. We have discussed, you know, doing sort of mass foreclosures on some other properties, the ones that were delinquent for years and years now. I did talk to the foreclosure person at the Saxon Gilmore, and he assured me that he would be able to muscle those in as quickly as possible. Quicker than it occurred last time um, because he has more staff now. Well, I was embarrassed last time, it was so slow. It's still going on, and uh, but the, the other firm, so that wasn't just them, you know, it's just a slow process, apparently. But um, he said that he, you know, he, I know he's done a lot of them, he's defended them as well, he's defended the kids foreclosures as well. Mm -hmm. So he knows the area real well. He just needs to have some staff to help with the old people. All the other work associated with the mm -hmm. as well. So if you want to proceed forward with that, then I, I did talk to um, Randy the other day and asked him to go ahead and give me, you know, find out who we have that is on the top of the list and let's move forward with whoever we have at the top of the list above and beyond this person. Yeah, so we can start getting some of these worked out in, in the foreclosure. So it seems to me that uh, similar to our forgiveness uh, schedule, we probably should work out some type of criteria as to how we select these properties and then going forward, that seems fair. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, you, you can do that. I mean, there, um, it's probably a good idea to do that. At some point, I, you know, when the lien gets, gets to be 80% of the value of the property or something like that, or exceeds the value of the property, yeah. then um, at that point, that was a good time to do the foreclosure. But, yeah, you know, just bearing in mind that 20, uh, foreclosures have to be done within 20 years, otherwise, the statute of limitation must run. Sure. Okay. No All right. So you have two options in front of you tonight. Uh, it seems quite obvious which uh, one that our attorney is pushing forward. So that's his advice. Do you have anyone who's going to make a motion to that effect? I'd like to make a comment. Okay. I have a question for Ms. Randy. Uh, looking at your three photos that you have up here, you say that you don't see a difference. I see a lot of difference. I mean, like I said in the last meeting, I rode by this house. I see a lot of difference. So my questions to this council is, do we give him a time frame that he must have it all cleaned up? Because he said, you don't know what that vehicle is. That could be a running vehicle that's just parked there. The blue one, the trailer. It could be something that he's ready to haul off. So Randy, would you like to go over the process that's led us to this point? Well, I'd like to press up first, I did not. Say that there, I did not really see any difference. I did say that I saw a difference. Um, as far as the process, this uh, location has been like this ever since I started my appointment here for the city, and that was um, May 18th of 2020. Um, what you customarily see in a drug house, and we're very confident calling it a drug house, is um, an ebb and flow type. So what happens is you'll see maybe a little bit of compliance and then you'll see if the second he goes to jail or the second that uh, something happens to him, you'll see an influx of other meth users that uh, frequent the house and then you have a whole brand new problem and a plethora of people that walk all night long, grab stuff, bring it back to the residents and basically if you, if you look, I didn't take a picture of all the garbage that was across the street today. Yeah, Randy, I was trying to be specific as to the uh, legal process. So this person has been cited at such and such a day, then they're given so many days, then so many. Days. Yeah, we, we went through the legal process completely on this, and, and literally a foreclosure is the last tool in the toolbox. Um, sometimes that's the only thing that people understand. Was um, this property already in uh, out of compliance whenever you started working? Yes. So it had yeah, already been cited for ever since I was in law enforcement. Yeah, I so it's been out of compliance and cited for years and years, but brought back in to every once in a while, and boom, right back to out of compliance. Okay, I, 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 
So to answer your question, they've had years to think about. So have these properties been before the council before? It, it doesn't well, generally go before the council. But I'm yet. saying this is the first time, right? It's not the first or it's been the first time we've been uh, uh, taking court action against them. And that's that's your purview to bring, us, bring in a legal action for injunction or uh, foreclosure of this uh, decision of the council. So my next question is, did we give He's not the owner, so I can't call him the owner. Did we give the resident Nato Creek, North Delaney, a, a proper amount of time to remove it? Yeah, he's had it over a year. No, I no, I'm talking about, sir, when he came before the board last two weeks ago. Did we give him the time frame that we wanted cleaned up? Yeah, it just seems, excuse well, me, sir. It just seems that if we're going to give him time, that we, we, we told him, we want you to clean it up, and then we're going to come back and make a decision. So I'm asking the question is, did we give him two weeks? Did we give him a month? He could still be working on it. I get it. We still have to go forward as if he's not going to, you know, do what he's supposed to do. I get that part. But if we gave him a certain amount of time to clean it up, nobody seems to be able to answer that. Well, and we, I get all we, the... We, we have answered that many times. We, at the last meeting, we gave him until this meeting. To have it cleaned up okay. and, and he's taking a little action but not much and then he, i just mentioned the fact that we i would still bring it back before you again uh -huh. before we actually file pleadings to to take the action itself so that would give me more time to do it at, at that point he's done it you know then totally then then we'll wait we'll just hold on to the pleadings until the next time which i'm sure will be right around the corner so we're going to give him the opportunity to clean it up you're good. You're good. Two weeks later, he's going to make a mess. We'll have to go back again. So now here we are three or four years down the road. I've lived there since 2017 in my house, and I am catty corner of him. I have seen the trash that he brings in, the people that he brings in. He had an unregistered sexual offender living in his home, which is two doors down from me. He's had all kinds of garbage. He'll take garbage piles across the street. You think, oh, okay, great. He's going to clean it up. Nope. Bring it right back in. I don't know. It's just Buy the truckloads. It just looks like to me we're taking the legal part. If we're going to, you know, take this man home because of the trash he brings, that's one thing. If there's legal issue going on, then, you know, that's something else. But you, you're putting the two together. And I, I, I think some of it, we're making assumptions of what's going on at the house. If that's the case, then call the sheriff department I in have. there and, and, I have. and do yeah, what they I, need to do. I have. We're getting off base here. I think you just don't quite understand exactly what we're, we're talking about because we just told you again, that even if you do the most aggressive action, which is to go ahead with the foreclosure, there's still gonna be additional time before it actually gets filed. So to answer your question, they've been given time and time and time and time and time so what the council is effectively saying is enough enough. And this is the next step. It's not the final step, but it's the next step in the process. Okay. Sure. I mean, even if he correct. cleans it up, okay. even if he yep. does clean it up, and you say it's a go there and it's great and there's no garbage, it's wonderful, and the fines stop, the fines have still accrued. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, now he's all come it, to It'll be up to the council at that time what we want to do. But for right now, we just have to make this decision and move on. So is there a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and start with foreclosure proceedings. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further questions or comments? Seeing no call roll. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McCare? Yes. Council Member Taylor? No. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. All right, item number nine, we have discussion for the city charter. I had asked uh, Attorney Burr to put this on the agenda. Basically, uh, there's some things that have never quite made sense to me with how our elections are held. Uh, we currently hold them on a three-year term. And what happens is, obviously, as a nation, we elect our officials on two-year and four-year terms. Most commonly, the four-year term. So we end up having elections in years where there's no other elections going on. No, they're not voting for judges, they're not voting for governor, or president, you name it. So a lot of people are not very interested in those elections and we have very little voter turnout. So it makes a whole lot more sense to me 
to not pay the extra money during these off years and have them on years that actually coincide with our main elections, i.e. four year terms. So because ours are on three year terms, we have these long cycles basically every 12 years. So right now is an opportune time because this election coming up this year will fall on a gubernatorial and a Senate and House election time. And then whenever the uh, three officials that were just elected, whenever they come up for re-election, that'll actually be during a presidential year. So if we go ahead and change it to four years this time, and obviously it's got to go before the voters. Voters have to approve it. We're just simply voting to put it on the ballot. But if it gets approved by the voters of Avon Park, then everything will line up with the presidential years and the Senate and Congress years. In addition to that, there's also a provision for uh, term limits as well. I had proposed for two consecutive terms was what was originally talked about, but you know the council can do with that as they wish. So I would be interested to hear what the council thinks about changing it to four year terms to coincide with the other elections. I have a couple comments. I, I've always thought that, uh, you know, that in one way, I always thought the term limits would be good because uh, you know, you, if you continue to have the same people in there, you, you don't necessarily need, need any new faces or new ideas in there. You know, but at the same time, you turn around and if you got somebody who has experience, then they can get reelected again and again. This is some similar to the same situation we had with the uh, planning and zoning board. You know, do you want to continue to give uh, new ideas and new people a chance to take their position, or do you want to go ahead and, and have somebody keep getting elected because then the electors will decide what the term limits are. So I'm somewhat conflicted, but at the, uh, and of course we did have two recent council members in the last few years who served 20 plus years, I believe. And uh, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying it is what it was because they were elected each time. So it's kind of like, uh, I see your point because I do know that some of these elections, like the last one, I think we only had, uh, Maybe 2,000 people and uh, 2,000 votes maximum. I think it was 900. I, I think you're right. Well, I, I kept thinking it was going to be 2,000. I apologize. Well, it was one third of the presidential year. You know, and I, you know, I was also told, you know, when I first moved here, people told me, said, you know, if you got a thousand dollars or something in an off year, you can go buy a bunch of signs, and nobody else would sign down. You might have people vote for you whether you're qualified or not. So it's it, it's it's got pluses and minuses, but I think at the same time. Uh, just like we talked about the code force, but I think that it would be good to give somebody the option to uh, uh, get some new people in here and some new ideas. Uh, the questions I would have by doing this, though, is one, when would it take an effect? Would it affect the next election? Would yeah, er everything always has to be going forward. You can't do anything retroactive. All right, so then the those that were just elected, they would continue to go under a three-year term, and then they would start the four and four if we decide to go with that. Correct. And this election here, it was started after the next to the next time the election would come up. So if and somebody the, was reelected, if the voters uh, voted for it on this election, and you were let's say running for reelection this year, that means that this year it would be a four-year term. Okay. So okay. So whoever runs, whoever gets elected this time, will start a four-year term, or whether it's somebody new or, or somebody that right. ran for correct. Election. Yep. Those, those start to two four year terms. And as well as those are like the last year, when they're three years up, they'll start to two four year Correct. terms. Correct. Which will be in a presidential year. Okay. The only last question I had then is if somebody serves those two four year terms and then uh, skips an election, can they come back for two more? Is that usual consequence to make a run again, or is it just two years? That's up to the council as to what rules we set. You can do it that way. The way it reads um, in this one city that I provided as an example is you're not allowed to have more than two consecutive right. four year terms, which means you could put out and then wait for another election, get back in, and then for two more. Yeah, I like that idea because the fact is, you know, the one good thing is if you get somebody in there for, let's say, a four year term. And let's just say that the majority of the voters do not agree with what that person is doing on the council with it or whatever it may be, then they could, you know, would have the option to not reelect them in a four year term. So there still would be a turnover of new people. So I like that option to where if somebody goes up two four year terms, 
that they could come back at a later date. Let's say, because sometimes we have a lot of boards where we don't have people even sufficient to have a quorum. So there's possibility, like last term, last election, we had four people running for three three terms, three uh, persons on the council. Theoretically, we could have somebody running them unopposed and, and then kind of like it's automatic. So I, I like the option of giving somebody else a fair chance to get up here because you know some people are well known, some people might have more money to buy signs and so on and so forth. I think that this would give everybody a chance to, uh, and limit those that are here. And I don't mind if they, you know, serve two terms and then come back, you know, an election later run again because it's still the people voting for them. So I like the idea. I, I think we need to give new people a chance to serve up here and see who would run. And let's say if uh, if nobody runs, then I think we ought to have the option that if somebody ended up with a second four year term and nobody decides to run for their place, that you could then run for your place again. Is that a possibility? Anything's possible. Okay. It's just, just a matter of what you all want to put in the charter. So yeah. It's small right. board. So it's um, um, moving right the way you guys okay. want to put it. Yeah. I, I, was, I was just trying to think of all the questions I could ask that, that we could discuss and share with sure. uh, you know, everybody on the council feels about it. And of course, like you said, the bottom line, whatever we decide, if we decide to make any changes, it'll be in the next election. And then the people will speak again. Right. And so, and so really what you'd be voting for tonight would be for me to revise the charter uh, with an ordinance and uh, put that ordinance together. And I was anticipating two ballots, um, it, unless you decide, if you decide you want to do term limits and um, the, um, the term extensions, mm -hmm. then I would I would have two two ballots, yeah. one for the extension, one for the term limit. That way, if one failed, you know. Yeah, just, you know, I, I would much prefer it to be separated that way. Yeah. If the voters don't agree with one aspect but not the other, then at least the other has a chance. So I, I think that uh, having term limits does a couple things. Number one, the person who gets elected, they know that they have a set clock. They know that they're only in there for a limited amount of time. You know, some may agree with this, some may not. But in my opinion, if you're in a seat for too long, you start to think of it as your own uh, and not what it should be, which is working for the people. You know, I think that having a definite window when you're getting out helps keep it in that perspective. Also, because people know that it's going to be on a regular interval, I think more people would actually be interested in running. Uh, because, you know, if somebody says, well, you know, they're, they're doing a good enough job, I'll just, you know, I'll just leave it alone. Yeah. I think that happens a lot. You know, at the end of the day, I think most voters just want to be left alone. You know, they want to live their life. But if they know that nobody's going to be in that seat and somebody has to step up, I can guarantee you this it's going to be more fresh in their mind and there's going to be a lot more people that are willing to come forward which is ultimately what you want you want the you know the best person to come you want to have 100 people that run that way the voters have lots of options not just one person or two people so i uh, look forward to hearing any other comments i got a comment i love the way it is it's why do you like the way it is? i like the way it is because I probably wouldn't have ran if it was for I okay. wanted to get in and get my feet wet, see if I like it, if I can help make some changes here in Avon Park. Probably just would not have ran if it was for. That's just my opinion. Um, let's talk about the presidential election. You know, you said, you noticed that it's on off years during the presidential, you know, and you wanted to pretty much move it to the presidential election. So my point I'm making is this. If the voters not going to come out and vote for you on any election, maybe you shouldn't be voted in. Makes, it makes zero it sense. Should, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be determined. We know during a presidential election, we know everybody turns out. We know that. That's and, a good thing. And, and, well, most people turn out. But even if it's not a, a presidential election, right here in the little city of Avon Park, if the voters don't come out and vote for you on a non-presidential election year, then maybe you shouldn't hold that seat. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you think that having more voters or less voters is the fairest? Of course, I would love to have as many voters come out and vote as possible. But we know we can't make voters come out. 
So are you saying that more voters or less voters? No, I'm going to say whatever voters come out, whether it's less or whether it's more, whatever voters come out. You know, if the resident of Avon Park want to sit in their home and be silent during any election, then that's their prerogative and the city moves up. I think the biggest deal is most of the people that I talked to before the election didn't even know there was an election. Exactly. However, if a president's being elected, they know there's an election. So it's not like they didn't want to come out and vote. It's like they didn't know that there was a vote. So I think the more publicity that gets out there, whether it's voting for governor or voting for president, I think that's what draws the people, not necessarily even who's running. Um, but definitely the more voters, the majority is going to win, you know, um, but I feel like it's definitely a publicity thing. They did not know that they were going to vote or not. Okay. Let me just uh, uh, clarify, uh, you'd still have staggered terms, so some, some would be running for midterm election, correct, and some would be running for the presidential election. The way it is now, if it goes forward with the four years and the uh, just like last year, where there's three council members that would be doing the presidential, and the mayor seat and the one council member would be during the office or the governorial. Uh, any I other actually, questions? I actually have a different opinion than Denise about not people voting. I actually, if, if I get elected, I'd rather have more people out there voting telling me that you're the person we want up there. Instead of just few that just happen to be in a newspaper and you are just elected. As we, as we all know now, not too many people get the newspaper anymore and, uh, and it's only delivered what four days a week or something like that. So, to be honest with you, if I was to get elected or re elected, I'd rather have more people out there telling me, citizens and voters in the city, that they want me sitting up here instead of just. Uh, you know, I, I can afford more signs for somebody that ran against me, or I got out there early and knocked on more doors or something like that. I'd rather see more people say, We want you. That's my thing. It's been, been my perspective over 30 years of doing this that, um, you know, there's been so many elections where I've, I've actually commented that someone could have been in the van and changed the election. You know, and is that is that right? I don't know. Yeah, I'll just leave that up to you. I don't think it is. If there was a way that we could uh, make it mandatory that every voting age person had to vote, trust me, I'd do it. Any other questions or comments? It should be a vote among the, the masses, not who you can recruit to bring them. Thank you. Get a seat. You should be a majority of the town. All right. So, do we have a motion for both, motion for one? And do we have any changes to the two year consecutive two consecutive terms? There was a discussion about making it that if you are unopposed, then you could go for an additional term. Um, it can be three consecutive, it can be one, it can be any number of things. So. Any insight to comment? Yes, ma'am. Name and address. Frank and Dory, 14 East Lake Drive. Um, my question to the council is, um, will, I, I understand that you want to uh, put this on the ballot come November, yes. but however, has anyone decide, decided to talk to the citizens about what they want prior to? Even sure. if they wanted, even if they wanted the term list to be changed to four years, or even if they want, um, the term limits to be two consecutive years of what happened. I mean, this is the first time this has been on, on the agenda from my understanding. Is it exactly? Yeah, the I mean, I've brought it up over the years several times. Typically, the other council that sat here said, uh, for lack of a better term, hell no. Exactly. Uh, so <laughs> that's why there's a new council here and they'll bring it up again. And that's fine. That's fine. And ultimately, the voters will get to decide. But bring them, of course, yeah, this can't be done without an ordinance first. And then, and so it's going to be two weeks of ordinance and a public, public hearing. So, I mean, I, there I, you I, go. That's where I was going with this. Thank yeah, you, sir. Yeah, so that's going to that's going to have to happen just to get it on the ballot. And then there's going to be an advertisement for the ballot. And so I, I think there's going to be plenty. I know this. And that's uh, where I, was I think going. there might be somebody from the from the press here that might say something about it. The media. Perhaps. Is <laughs> that mainstream or not? 
We're the local media. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. We're the we're the <laughs> All right. So, is there any motions? We still have it finalized. Or not? I was I was told a long time ago when I started my career before I retired that uh, most people are afraid to make a change. And most people like to stay where they're at. They don't want to move. They don't want to do this. They don't want to do that. They want to keep everything the same. But I I've always been want to change. Just like I like to see the city of Avon Park grow. I like to see that that change. So I've had like I said I've had conflicting ideas about this, but I I think I made up my mind that I'm going to make the motion. That we uh, move to uh, two consecutive four-year terms uh, about the maximum, and uh, I guess everything needs to start it uh, this election. Yes, it would be this next election. Yeah. Okay. Jerry, does that does that motion suffice? That motion suffices. Okay. That's really just corrections made in the past. Right. You know, the detail when you see the ordinance. So now, did you want to put in the unopposed? Right. Yes. Uh, if uh, and I'd like to add that if for some reason nobody applies for the position that you're leaving, say after the second four-year term, that you then could go ahead and reapply for another term. Well, you would by default. But uh, like I said, I actually think that you're you're right though. When people know that. Uh, Somebody's not going to run for re-election after the second four-year term. You might see a lot more people running for that spot, and I think that's a good thing. All right, so we have the motion. Or the change at the end. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire. Yes. Councilmember McGuire. Yes. Councilmember Taylor. Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard. Yes. Mayor Anderson. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. I don't know 10 regular updates from the city manager. Wait a minute. Um, excuse me, I can, I, I can hear Brenda Gray for 10 makes East Lake New Drive. Did you all decide to do the four year terms yes. as well? Yes. Okay. I, yeah, I didn't hear that. Either. I didn't know what it was. That wasn't in his motion. I thought, I thought he said the second four year terms. He said 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 Okay. We're gonna get a new sound system real soon. Are you guys getting old? <laughs> That's on the update. Any updates? Yep, I didn't make it in your packet. Um Sam transitions going well. We're gonna meet with the uh, Melody are gonna meet with Casey this week. He was out here at his family, unfortunately, this past week to sit down about them um, collecting the the leases out there and how we're going to go about it because some pay by check, some pay by cash, and some do it the ACH. So we're going to sit down with him on that. But everything's going well. Um, I had Rick Reed, we, we actually got a new Ford Ranger in. We had an old one that isn't worth that much, but taking it out there for them to use because we have no vehicles to use out there. So we're just going to use one of our old Ranger trucks. So they have to call us up with a pickup truck. So everything's going well out there. Uh, the jet ski races, I don't know if any of you made it down there to see them. I know the mayor talked about it. I went down, was down there for about an hour. Spoke to uh, one of the, uh, the event people from uh, Airstream. He said that he thinks that's the best venue he's ever been at since doing this. And some of the racers have told him the same thing. It's the first one where you could tell, see them. You could actually see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I didn't see a ton of people down there, but there was a lot of people from all walks of life down there, little kids, older people, kind of every walk of life in Avon Park seemed to be enjoying themselves. So I, I think it went good. They were expecting more racers, but unbeknown to them, there was another race in Florida, which a lot of, they call the big guys, the ones that, the ones that were on there can get up to about 70 miles an hour, big guys go a little faster. So next year, if we can get them back, they'll like have some more. I talked to one of the vendors there that because they had, uh, they called up, they got a little uh, worried. They didn't have enough people selling some food there. So actually George the Chamber came through for me last minute. It's a guy out of Sebring who has several of them. And he said he stopped coming to Avon Park because of the way things were done in the past. I assured him with the council and city manager and staff that it's not that way. We want him up here. So I'm up here. he's supposed to be calling me hopefully this week to arrange coming up and having some of his um, 
his um, food trucks up here more often. So excellent. I think it's very good. Yeah, I think uh, on that race, the longer that it's established, it's obviously going to grow. I think there's a lot of people that didn't know anything about it. Um, so if we have it next time, then we can do a better job of advertising it. There's a lot of, you know, George, I, I know we do a lot more. There's a lot of other groups that probably would do a lot more to advertise it. So if they can uh, do it again next year, I think it'll be bigger and better. Yep. And Barry let me know he had it advertised on the radio. Yep. Yes, he did. Good job, Barry. The new audio for council chambers. As of this morning, I found out that Tony Bassett has been able to find a mixer. You know, it's like you can't find doors and windows and a bunch of other stuff. We couldn't find a mixer. He's found it. Next Monday, he will be starting. All right. Excellent. Great. I like that. How long is it going to take typically just to put it in about a week? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping he gets it done in the week. I haven't talked to him, Andy. Um, first thing I just want to actually talk to him. So, but he, what can tell us? Like, probably take it. They thought initially he said it'd take two weeks because he's got to rip the guts out of all the underneath all the tables. So, but is that, that going to that one over there? Is that going to mess up our meeting time for next May? I mean, the next one coming? Will that run into that? You can get megaphones. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Speak loud. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we will. Coordinate with them, make sure it doesn't. Very good. Um, and last thing, just so you know, we're going to do some moving offices around for the betterment of uh, our staff here. Melody and Danielle and Andy Mogul, the purchasing agent, they're going to be moving over here where code enforcement is. We had actually offered a job to a um, young lady to be the budget manager, but then she pulled out when her employer was going to pay her more money. So <laughs> Melody's whole thing is, first she said it was dark and dingy over here, <laughs> then changed her mind. She believes that she can build a team being closer to them. I believe the same thing is really needed with our finance, especially with her teaching. And uh, Randy and his code um, people will be moving over into where Danielle is now on the first floor. Okay, so that move is tomorrow. We're going to try to make it all in one day for the guys that are actually doing it. So Melody's all excited. I came to her this morning. Said, are you sure? She said, yes, I think this is best for, for the city and for, it's going to be good. She's going to be able to be closer to her people and she's still got a lot to teach. Yeah. So. Excellent. Um, What's the AC going to be set up, Melody? I don't know. Higher than has it at 69. I'm not sure. It's no. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think that's it, man. All right. Anything else for the? Oh, we do have a sign up. I'm going to torture this name. Yes, ma'am. Come up to the microphone. <laughs> she lives at 1350 North Lake Avenue. Yes, yes ma'am. What can we do for you? The problem is uh, I talked to. City manager, mm -hmm. the scooter, big, big the bird scooters, scooters yeah. they park in the middle of the footpath. Okay. So I asked officer came to my park. I live in 55 Chris community here in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and he said if you feel in the queue because I always on bike, uh -huh. I ride on the footpath. So he said you can move it, and I did every single day this morning also when I went to. Gym, it's about 7 30 in the morning. I moved on the side and now I came here. They put it back I and see. I find glasses. They brought glasses the first time, sir. Mm -hmm. All around, all four. I have some here with me. I bring it with me. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's, I don't know, I will never do that. So I request to the city manager to call them and talk to them. Sure. That they, they shouldn't do that. So sure. it's glass it's and proper. Like, yeah, I have here for bottles. Today, I have I bring some. Yeah, that, that's that, that, that's fun. We we don't actually we get the picture. The so I would just ask Mark, have you reached out to him yet, or is this the first that you? No, I reached out. I we sat down for a good twenty minutes and talked. She's she had another case. She reported to sheriff's office. Something happened over there. She talked oh, about a bunch of litter over the place, which mm -hmm. I told her we pick it up all the time. People throw things down. So we do the best we can to get it picked up. I talked to uh, Bird Scooter, the, our local 
Legacy Bicycle, Dan Feathers, who I speak to anytime something comes up, I told him where I actually, he said he'd actually talk to you. Did you talk to someone? I called you. Okay. Uh, and um, anyways, the one that I knew was out there because I saw it there for seven days when we had that road shut down. And that's. Yeah, but, but that is tennis, not on, not right. like a, where I ride. Right. He but told me you talked about this court, one area that you didn't tell me outside about. Outside the tennis court, yeah. Well, it, um, they know who the last person was that dropped those off that by the computer. They do. So, so they, they can find them if they want or just stop them from using the scooters until they, they um, take care of them. Well, what, what I've seen, Jerry, they're doing a good job. They've got a guy to go around, pick them up. I see them out here all the time. Because people ride and drop them when they're done, done riding them, and then they go pick them up and bring them back. But, yeah, but sir, anytime that I've called them, they've been right on it. But go ahead. They put six all the time. I noticed, I think they just put it on Friday. Yes, yeah, so you're, you're saying that the company stages them. Yeah, there. six. Yeah. Six now oh, here, but... here by the stoplight. We also, they have it, but I'm up the right that way. Yeah. So only so, there, the mail is empty only. It's the, yeah. it's the corral. It's there, there's the, the corral is a long place. 803, yep. an apartment or apartment, government apartment, or they call uh, Next to each other, the house. Yeah. Hundred one thousand and one. I see the number. Okay. Four three and it's in the middle of the field. It's okay. Orange field. So we'll we'll simply have a conversation with Bird and tell him that you know the pathways have to be unobstructed, particularly if they're being staged that way. You know, if somebody drops something in the middle of the sidewalk, obviously they'll have to try to you know sort it out with that individual person, but. We can probably prevent a staging issue. Well, they, they're supposed to take pictures of where they park their their scooter before they can turn off the timer. So I mean, they know if it's in the wrong place, and they should say something immediately about that. Uh, I would think. But well, I just moved it, sir, and uh, I asked Sherry come to my park. I said, "Can I do that?" He said, "No, if you cannot go through and hinder the people that walk and you ride back, so just move." On yep. the side, I say I did, and this morning I did. And when I came here, <laughs> they put it and I clean all the glasses. I throw it on the side, grass side, and I have some here with. Understood. For the first time. Yeah. To, tomorrow I will call them back and ask them exactly what you're talking about. The one you and I talked about was different, but I will, oh, I will get with them. More, sir. It's about <laughs> that someone hurting me and uh, junks. But see, it depends on the people itself. I will never do that myself. Of my kids, yeah. I will spank them. This or that. Besides, it's my thing. I told you. I you did? Him. No, no, no. Yep. Garbage box, you saw it in the garbage so, Man, we, we greatly appreciate it. We we hear you loud and clear. There's nothing for the council to do here, so our staff can handle it, and they'll take care of it. Thank you. Thank you very well. Thank you. All. Yes, ma'am. You. you as well. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just give your name and address in the microphone there. Okay. Um, well, 1012 South Lake Boulevard. All right. What can I we do have here? a question. I was, ha haven't been here for two city council meetings. Mm -hmm. So last month, this was brought up, and I need to get some information. I live on South Lake Boulevard. Are you all really going to put a trailer camp or park down, down the street on Lake Boulevard? I mean, I think it is. Are you so talking about behind the race track development? Or? Yes. Okay. And and the people that live across the street don't know anything about it? Yeah, it, it hasn't you, been brought before a council yet. Yeah, yes, it is. It's you, all, you all had the map up here on both of these screens. It was a reference to the road she's talking about. Yeah, the zoning for that for that particular those units to go in has not been started yet, to my knowledge. Have they started that yet? No. Yeah. They, they've cleared, yeah. they've cleared it off, but we're, we're, I'm actually meeting with a city engineer tomorrow morning, reference to road. Okay. Has it been approved by, by the city of council? No. no. There's a lot of phases for it to go through before it gets to that point. Because I feel like if it has, you all are not fair to the people that live in that area. Ma'am, as I told you, it hasn't, no, okay. Okay. It, I heard it hasn't you. been brought. I, I heard you, and I'm just saying that if you had approved it, or if you don't, you know, you still need to consider the people. Let them know what's going on. So, ma'am, if you talk to anyone who is concerned or isn't concerned, please. 
tell them that it will be coming up in the future. So be vigilant and watch out when it does, and they can come speak your piece. Thank you. Yes, That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Anything else we give the city? Yes, sir. I think you know by now. Media man. <laughs> Oh, Barry Foster, Highlands Radio Group, 3750 Highway 27 North Sebring, Florida. Yes, sir. I can assure you if there's any zoning hearings that will be broadcast on the radio on any of our stations that carry the news. Uh, I will tell you that I wish Mr. Macklin was here tonight, but you would do well to find out that under Lewis Bates a couple of decades ago, there were enterprise zones put in Avon Park. I don't know what there's if there's a statute of limitations or not. But there are enterprise zones here. Uh, they didn't seem to do much good, but they did establish them here. Uh, there's also brownfields established here in Avon Park for contamination. And you probably want to take a look at those and find out. It's, it requires some research because um, not all the issues of the new sun are on the web anymore. They've had several catastrophic failures. So you really have to hand search it in the... Uh, in, in the uh, actual newspapers themselves, but there's a lot of them at the Depot Museum uh, where you can look at them. And finally, for the elections, I covered the elections. I can tell you the turnout for the city of Sebring was puny. People were winning by six and seven votes. It was a race to the polls because they only had a few hundred votes uh, a piece. That people turn out for the, the off year elections and, and uh, presidential elections because it's all about all the up, up ticket races. I will also tell you that when people aren't running, you have you, hundred, lots of people turn out. When, uh, when Sheriff Godwin retired, you had seven candidates. Uh, when Charles Bryant uh, left, then he was uh, six or seven candidates. Mm -hmm. Then when there are open seats, and there was a time when there were seven people sitting up here but they couldn't find enough people to run. So they shrunk the council of five because they couldn't find anybody to run. So you maybe, if you don't have somebody to fill the seat, maybe down to three, I don't know. Well, I wasn't joking about the, the, the van rental. I mean, you can yes. literally change some elections that, I, that I've dealt with in 30 years with watch, a, watch, a six person van. Watch Tom Hanks and Charlie's work. Uh, and he talks about how he got involved in politics. But I will tell you that when, when an incumbent leaves, you have a lot more interest because I have seen people, when you have an incumbent, it's very, very, very difficult to unseat an incumbent. And in the 30 plus years I've been here, I've seen it less than five times. Yeah. So I, I think that, I think you're doing a good job with term limits. If it's good enough for the president, it's, it's good enough. So we ask him about Thank you so much. Right, well, one question for you on the sure. enterprise zones. Was there any, can you remember anything about any benefits to these zones? They, they give you tax benefits to locate. But was that issued by the city or was that something? It was, it was, it was done by the city. It was, it's a, it's a, I believe it was a federal program. And I wish Mr. Macklin was here. Mm -hmm. His memory is better than mine. But it was, it's a federal program administered through the state to county and, and, and municipal governments. In an effort to try to bring um, try to bring new business into areas that have had problems with business, as we know, Avon Park is riddled with slum and blight because that's why you have a community redevelopment agency. Right. And in all the years I've seen community redevelopment agencies, the slum and blight never seems to get any better. But you get more I, of what you subsidize. But, I will tell you that enterprise zones are designed to help entice businesses to come in. And even sometimes businesses who can't afford to come in if they have less capital funds. But that's the first thing that, that's what makes businesses go under the lack of capital funding. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe what it was told to me is that you have to be able to run your business for five years without a profit to be able to, to, to make it because people come in and think they're just gonna run off their profits and it doesn't work like that. But there are, and uh, Mr. Schmucker was here, but uh, Jennifer Cotto of Salisbury was probably here. In fact, just left. Miss Gray was here. Oh, she's still here. She was here in the olden days, like me. She probably remembers because she's like old, like I am. 
So she might, and she might even still have Lewis Bates phone. He might be able to tell you. So I will tell you that those things, one thing when you're around for a long time, you remember stuff. And so I can tell you that they may still exist here. I don't know if your zoning and your, your other things have changed significantly, but you may have those things where you can start taking advantage of them right now if you can, can find them. Yeah. Well, I thought the, uh, the part about Brownsville is interesting because there are grants from time to time right. that, that um, help them clean up Brownsville. So if we know where they are, we can apply for those grants. I can tell you that there is a gas station up on Highway 27, and this large tire company over here also, I think, was, was designated. I could be wrong about that. Well, I'm not going to name any names, but I can tell you that there were a couple of of brownfield designations here in yeah. in Avon Park that me you might be able to leverage. I remember the uh, the town center there. There was uh, the test well there for a number of years. Those test wells, to my knowledge, have since been removed and that's been fully remediated at this point. But as far as I know, that's what happens when you're old. <laughs> Very good. I appreciate it. All right. Anything else for the good of the city? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a mountain to South Highland Avenue. What did we do for you, sir? I've tried much misinformation from our and I guess it took it to somebody else. How about some property over in the Great William area? And uh, it's like locked in. But with the road to go back there, or whether it is now a night. There's a whole homes are still back there. Okay. And trying to grow the city, we need to look at all these places. The land is just there, sitting there. We can grow it. People buy this land and, and you can get there. Okay, so to be specific, you, you purchased the piece of property. Right. And the property is locked in, you say? Right. So you can't access it? Right. And you're trying to find out if you can access it and if there's water. There. It used to be a road. Okay. Go through there. Matter of fact, you have an easement all the way around. Okay. But now it's closed in. And, um, did you take, did you do a title search whenever you purchased the property? Did they say there was an easement to the property? Right. Just there. Well, isn't that the answer that you need? No. I need to be done. He's by the city. It's grown up. Okay. So it's a city easement. Yeah. I see. So you need it to be maintained. And you, you, you know, you got a lot of property. You take your property, but you got a lot of property. Right? You don't know you own. I mean, you don't know you own. There's probably There's hundreds of acres that we right. don't maintain. Yeah. yeah. No, not to you maintain. It's growing up. <laughs> it's growing up. But you don't know you have it. You've cited it. That we don't else. maintain is what it says. Right. Yep. Okay, uh, Mark, has there been specific action on that? Water. Yes, Rick Reed has been out there about water. Okay. This is an area that Gary may remember down there on these lots. They own into the middle of the road. There's people that are built off their lots. There's a house down there. It's built on two lots owned by different people. Gotcha. It's it's a mess down there, really. Gary probably doesn't remember there was a career looking down there. Actually, one of our ex council members. Um, Live down there, and there is. I've got a sticky note to call Ale because um, Rick said wait until I can really see what's down there. Because actually, some of them went down there. You grew up down there, I found out. But there's water that runs off the road, runs through somebody else's property. There's just water lines run down there, haphazardly or whatever, and they're really old lines. But Rick still doesn't know exactly what we have down there because the whole area down there is a mess. Okay. So is there any hope that this could be sorted out and brought before council or it can be if I've got to get with Gary on right of way issues down there where it looks like there's right of ways and there's people built garages in that end. So are you saying there was unpermitted work done? That's what I'm saying. I'm shocked. 
So that it's not just an easy answer. Yes, you got to write well. Yes, you have water. It's a mess, and it's going to have to take Jerry on his legal side of it to look at. And yeah. So basically, you know, if somebody built a building on a city easement, now you're left with a very stiff choice. Do you have them tear that piece of building down, or do you lease an area to them? And then if it obstructs someone else, then now you have an even bigger problem. So I think you're opening a, a big can of worms here, but lo and behold, buddy, we're going to open it. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Yep. And I understand what Al's saying. There's, there's other people own lots down where he owns it too. But to say there's a right of way, I can't say that now. And say there's water there. There may be a line running through somebody's property. <laughs> so it's a mess. Okay. All right. Anything else we good to see? Seeing nothing, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, please. Seeing no opposition, we are adjourned. Thank you.